this is what we got today 2005 Nissan Armada of course you know the Titans from the B pillar forward is the exact same truck uh, I noticed that this is the symptom I had I wasn't getting any uh, consistent heat unless I revved the engine that's a telltale sign that either your water pump is extremely corroded or your long coolant I checked the uh, the coolant reservoir and sure enough it was empty so I put some coolant in it and that cured the uh, the low heat issue it, at idle I would get full heat no issues but uh, I would check the, the coolant reservoir periodically and I noticed that the level kept getting lower and lower. So, I mean, it, that means it's a coolant leak. Coolant doesn't just disappear. And these engines are not known for uh, for blowing head gaskets like that. This is the uh, 5.6 liter Nissan Endurance V8. Trust me, they call it an Endurance V8 for a reason. These engines these engines can take some, some abuse. It's not like the, the, the car engines. This engine is a monster. Uh, so I, I started, it, had the truck running, went under it. I was like searching, searching, searching. Then slowly but surely I saw a s small drip starting to develop. Then it turned into a full on stream. I checked the water pump weep hole. It was dry. Checked the coolant reservoir tank, no cracks. I traced the leak all the way up to the bottom of the radiator. So I'm thinking the lower tank on the radiator is cracked. But uh, the truck has 204,000 and change miles on it and climbing. And I do not baby this truck. Uh, you see my past videos. Uh, this thing, I road tripped this truck to uh, Florida from Virginia with, without thinking twice. Uh, road trip to PA without thinking twice through the mountains, pulling trailers. Matter of fact, that's my, uh, my 7x12 right there. Now I pull that trail all over the place, fully loaded with this truck. I did the bypass. You can see my additional uh, air to fluid uh, transmission cooler that works in conjunction with. I'm just trying to see if I can show you the uh, the factory. The OEM one is actually between the condenser and the and the radiator, so I, you can't see it, but it's in there. The truck comes with an air to fluid. I added an additional air to fluid because I bypassed the one that's in the radiator, the fluid to fluid, because they're known to crack and destroy the transmission when the coolant gets in the transmission. I've never seen an aftermarket radiator with a uh, with a filled transmission cooler. So what I'm going to do is when I install this radiator, I'm going to put the fluid to fluided fluid to fluid transmission cooler back in circulation so I'll have the fluid to fluid but well, basically it's more of a preheater it helps the transmission warm up faster because I've noticed since I took the factory one out of circulation it takes forever to warm up the transmission but uh and the, the temperature is not like consistent it doesn't like overheat or anything it just it'll get really really cool and then it'll get it'll warm up to like operating temperature then it'll get really really cool again depends on what I'm doing pulling a hill or whatever but uh, I'm gonna put it back in, into circulation for quicker warm-ups and more consistent uh, temperatures the the temperature swings are not it, it's not hurting anything there are vehicles out there with only air to fluid so don't you don't even fret if you did the bypass but I'm about to install this uh this radiator and I'm see if I could walk you through it, okay? If I miss some steps, don't worry about it. It's not that hard to do. But I'm gonna try to get all the steps in, uh, to just to, to help someone out if they need to change theirs also, okay? All right. Let's remove first thing the engine cover. These two 10 millimeter bolts. And of course, I just dropped that one on top of the dog on. Splash blade of skid blade. I'll get that later. But anyway, pull those two 10 millimeters and remove the engine cover. I 
I ain't pulled this one in, in a while, so. Damn, that was tight. All right, get that off so he just pushes in back there. Get that out of the way. Then the next thing we're gonna remove is, I'm gonna remove the intake duct. Just to get it out of the way, giving me more room to uh, more room to work. To remove the air duct, you remove this hose clamp, that hose clamp, and move these two spring clamps, pry these off, and you can move the duct out of the way. Alright, next up we're gonna remove the fan and clutch assembly. It's those four, I think they're eight millimeter uh, bolts. All right, all four nuts are removed. The way I get to the bottom nut on the fan clutch, I loosen the tension on the tensioner pulley and just rotate the whole fan pulley until the bottom nut is on the top. It's loose now, it's actually ready to fall off. Oh, another tip I like to do, anytime I remove the intake duct, I put something in there. A rag is preferable, but this is what I got. Uh, right now uh, next move I'm gonna remove this 8 millimeter 8 millimeter and there's one in there and one in there all right uh, correction these nuts were 10 millimeter okay all right to pull the fan up the fan is out I like I said I removed this that, that, and that. These two are for the shrud, the fan shrud right here. Actually, the fan shrud, I should be able to pull that up once I remove this top hose. All right, you gotta remove these in here. That's definitely an eight millimeter. That one, and the one in, uh, and the one in, in there, I don't know if, there you go. Those two clamps are what hold the condenser uh, to the radiator. Okay. Or should I say that it's just destabilize it or something like that. You see it right there? It bolts to the radiator and there's a bracket, a rubber grommet right there. So you just pull those to 8 millimeter. All right, the two brackets are out. The eight millimeter bolt goes right there. The other one goes right here. And there are the brackets right there. I scribed a little P on that one so I know that one is the passenger side. Or the right side. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain the coolant uh, out of the radiator. There's a little drain cock. I don't like using that thing, it drains so slowly. So I just, I usually just pull the bottom radiator hose and I'm gonna drain it into that container right there. My truck has the skid plate on there, so I'm gonna remove the skid plate. You can see the coolant dripping right there. I'm gonna remove the skid plate because the lower radiator hose is right here. All right, the splash guard or skid plate, whatever you call it, is removed. Let me show you under the truck. That's what we're going after right there. That hose. That's the lower hose. That's where I drain my coolant. That is the drain plug if you want to use that one. But that one drains too slowly. As you can see, my uh, fluid to fluid transmission fluid cooler is capped off on both ends. I don't use them. All right, so let's get this thing drained. And there you go, it's draining. Now, if your truck, if you still have the transmission fluid to fluid cooler uh, lines hooked up to the bottom of the radiator, since you're already down under the truck, this is a good time to disconnect them and st stick a uh, appropriately sized bolt or something in the line to uh, limit how much transmission fluid you're gonna lose. 
the less you lose, the less you have to put back in. Since mine, I did the bypass, I don't have to worry about that. Disconnect the upper radiator hose. Remove the uh, the feed for the coolant reservoir. It's a little spring clamp on there. Just pull that off, remove the cap. But at this point, you should have already uh, loosened up the shrud and your fan and fan clutches off. Uh, for those of you who haven't done the bypass, one of the transmission uh, cooler lines is going to be clipped onto the bottom of the shroud. Just unclip it, and uh, you should be able to remove the shroud. It should just pull up. All right. Yeah, the shroud just pulls up. The transmission coolant line will be clipped right in. Ah, let me lay it down. In there. The coolant reservoir return is going to be clipped in there. All right, so just unclip those and just slide her off. Spool, slide it up. Now is a good time for me to show you the uh, factory installed air to fluid transmission fluid cooler. A lot of people don't realize that their trucks do come with one. That again, right in there, that's the one that I added. That's the factory one right there. That's the radiator behind it. Let me get this dog on thing to focus. Really? There we go. There we go. See? That right there is your factory install. That thing is huge. Air to fluid, transmission fluid uh, cooler. And over there is the radiator. See, that's one of the lines right there, the hard lines. And it's plumbed right on the side. See the difference? Radiator, transmission cooler. See, there's a difference. And you also have in the bottom of the radiator, the bottom tank, a liquid to liquid transmission cooler or preheater, whatever you want to call it. All right. So, uh, what I got to do now is undo that and that. To unbolt the factory install uh, air to fluid transmission fluid cooler then I'll be able to pull the radiator out all right the factory external air to fluid transmission cooler is unbolted so now the radiator should just lift on up well pull on out yeah it's coming out but I'm gonna need two hands for this one all right I'll be right back. All right, and I'm gonna do my best to try to explain this. After you unbolt, after you remove these two bolts for the factory air to fluid cooler, you pull up on it, it's tabbed in. If you look down there, the tabs, see if we get it back in. All right, it's back in. So you gotta lift up and get it out. See, I just did that. Now, the condenser is the exact same way. I'm trying to, all right, there you go. Right down there in the corner. Right down there in the corner, right there. And on the other side is the exact same way. I'm trying my best to help you guys out because if you're not really into doing stuff like this all the time, it could kind of jam you up. You will get frustrated. And I don't want you to get frustrated. You can do this, all right? It, there's another tab down there so you pull up on the condenser right here you pull up on that the same way you did with this you pull up and towards the front of the vehicle and it'll come out of the little slats let me show you what the slats look like on the new radiator these are the slots for the condenser this these are the slots for the uh these two are the slots for the uh air to fluid cooler the factory one, this, and that one over there are the slots for the for the condenser. All right, maybe now that you see them, it'll make a little bit more sense. So you pull up, slide forward, and it'll come out. Then the radiator should uh, should lift out. All right, the radiator is out. 
that is the made in the USA factory on uh, Nissan radiator it's been in the truck since 2005 when the truck was built it has over 204 thousand miles on it see that wet spot right there yep there it is see the crack there's a crack right there it's a big old crack too see I'm making it flex right there all right time to get the new one ready and install it if you look at the crack in this thing it's right at the mountain point For the uh, for the shroud, there it is. See, the shroud goes like this. See, so I think that's very interesting because this shroud doesn't weigh anything. But I mean, the heavier side would be the passenger side. See, that's how it sits in the vehicle. So the side with the most weight is actually pushing down on the side that cracked. So I guess this is another one of those uh, Nissan nut. If it'll happen, it's when it'll happen. So there's something to look forward to with these plastic uh, tanked radiators. I wish I could tell you some type of uh, preventive maintenance for this, but I, I really don't see any any way to take the weight off of uh, off of that tab. All right, let's get hot. All right, here we go. This is the new radiator. That's the old one. If you see, the old one has these uh these old clip on nut things the new one comes with brand new ones you just gotta slide them in there 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 and there these nuts are already in there all right so we're gonna slide those in and get this thing ready to, uh, to install and that's what they look like installed all right so I'm gonna pull this one out out of the phone and drop it in Installation is going to be the reverse of uh, removing it. Don't forget to pull out in these holes right here on the factory radiator. You'll have these rubber grommets. They just snap in right there like that. Pull them out of the old radiator and put them in the new radiator. Don't do like I did and had to uh, had the dog on a radiator almost fully installed. And realize I forgot the grommets <laughs> had to pull it back out all right so uh, don't do like I did put the grommets in on the first go around all right time to put it back in all right the new radiator is in place it's in its mount the external transmission cooler the factory one is in place and the condenser is in place and their little tabs down there I kid you not, that was not easy to get them in the tabs. But uh, it's doable. I just got it in. So now, first thing I'm going to do is screw the uh, transmission cooler to the new radiator. Then I'm going to put the brackets for the condenser back on. And uh, I'm going to get the hoses on and I'm gonna uh, fill the radiator with uh, with coolant and uh, after I fill it with coolant I'm gonna work on getting the the sh fan shroud back on the fan back in and the intake duct all right it's back together except for the engine cover and the uh, the splash guard or skid plate. I filled the uh, 
the radiator. And you gotta be careful when you fill in this thing because as you're filling the radiator, believe it or not, it actually starts to fill that. So if you put too much in here, it, this is just gonna start filling up. So keep your eye on, on your eye on this also, okay? Uh, put the cap on. Make sure this was tight. I fired it up. Full heat in the rear and full heat up front. Uh, let it run until the thermos. Well, I let it run until the thermostat opened up. I can get full heat. Everything feels good. So. What I'm going to do is go ahead and put the engine cover back on and the splash guard or skid plate back on. And I think I'm going to take a drive into town. All right, so good luck if you decide to tackle the radiator. Uh, I just did it right here in, in my yard. And you can do it too, okay? It, is, it might seem intimidating at first, but trust me, you, you can do it. There's numerous videos on YouTube. Uh, I just made this quick, simple one. Installation is reverse of removing it. And just be sure to put everything, anything you remove, you put back. The, the manufacturer does not ship the vehicle with spare nuts and bolts and spare part, parts. So if you have anything left over, when, you're, when you think you're, you're done, you left something off. All right. Good luck.